Welcome to Hindu Analysis, July 9, 2018. So today we are going to see all these five topics. So the first article is the center plans stronger defenses for key data, which means the center is now planning to give more protection to the very important data of whatever ministries or departments of our country. So the Home Ministry now uh, planning to upgrade this national information security policy and guidelines to secure the government's data and also plan to control the access over all these data. So if you see the cyber security is the sole preserve of the home ministry's data or the department's data before but in 2013 they moved this uh, preservation of all these data to National Security Council Secretariat under the Prime Minister's office. So if you see what is this NISPG the National Information Security Policy and Guidelines, this NISPG is developed under the Ministry of Home Affairs and it is helping to protect the classified information which are processed by these ministries and the departments of our country. So this NISPG, it also highlights the policy, the concepts, the practices which have to be followed by the ministries and the departments in order to protect their classified information. So these practices will help establish minimum security processes and control the data across the government departments. So it is also this NISPG is also acts as a guidance to the organizations to prioritize and focus the attention uh, and efforts in classification of the information, what are the important information and what are the uh, little important information and so thereby we could easily classify the important information and make it more encrypted and more safer. Now the critical infrastructure is uh, moved to this NTRO which is the National Technical Research Organization and the non-critical part of this process is moved to this Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology which is MITI. So if you see this NTRO which is National Technical Research Organization its role is to protect the information which is under their control from the during the information life cycle like the uh, creation of those informations or processing of those informations or storage of those informations so this NISPG its role is has a very important function of protecting whatever the information under its control like the creation of the information storage of the information processing of those informations until the destruction of the information so and if you see in case of NTRO so this NTRO is a technical intelligence agency under the National Security Advisor in PMO's office which was set up in 2004. So the second article is no one wins on the US-China trade war. So we all know what is happening recently. The trade war, the world's greatest trade war is emerging between US and China. So both these countries like United States and China is implementing the tariff imposition on each other's product in a uh, retaliating way. So we all know that this war is going to be a greatest trade war in the economic history. But what are those implications? of these uh, trade war if we see means these are the implications of these trade war so the first one is the job losses to the majority of the people of India China and uh, US will be the first major concern if at all this trade war is emerging and continuing at the same pace and the second one is uh, the disruption of the supply chain of the producers who rely on the foreign imports which means if your US company is depending on the products or raw materials from the China or a China depends on the raw materials from US Due to this uh, tariff imposition, it is obviously going to affect the supply chain of the uh, pro production. In terms of consumers means, that means we are now going to have to pay more prices for the same products which we used to buy earlier in a very cheaper price. So that is also a major concern in terms of customer, customer perspective. And the another concern is in a globalized world, the globalization is the best method rather than the protectionism. But in this globalized world, no country can hope to impose the tariff without affecting its own economic interest. If a country is willing to put tariff imposition on another country's product, it is obviously ready to prepare for its own economic interest losses also. So the next implication or the major implication is no good to their own economic fortunes also. In the future, if at all this tariff imposition is going to continue, the trade war is going to uh, expand, then obviously the economic fortunes of every country is very deteriorating. So this economic uncertainty due to this trade war is also affecting the private investment in the US which means if a private company X from any other country want to invest in US then due to this fluctuations of the tariff impositions and due to this trade war emerging they are now become hesitant to uh, invest in this in US so which is also a major concern for the private investment in US. 
So the next major implication is it threatens the rules based global trade order which is we already have a lot of trade organizations uh, for example WTO uh, in order to handle the trade disputes between these countries if at all occur. So these are only uh, the trade dispute resolution uh, organizations for decades. But now these countries instead of approaching these organizations they now started to retaliating each other by means of imposing the tariffs on each other. So, so it indicates that the, these trade organizations are also losing its uh, value on the go. The next major implication is it could also isolate the US from other countries. Like if you see in recent days, this US is withdrew from this Trans-Pacific Partnership and in early 2017. So the remaining 11 countries, they just go themselves and sign this Asia-Pacific uh, Treaty, tr which is also known as the Trans-Pacific Trade Deal, so leaving out the US. So again, it is a concern for US because it could isolate the US which in turn affects all the countries imports and exports on the long run. So as a conclusion they told like the world economy which is on a slow path to its recovery from the depression can do without these kind of unnecessary shocks like tariff imposition, trade war, all these kind of things. So it is doing well on its uh, path already. The next article is a shot of formalin and the sea of trouble. So recently FSSAI which is Food Safety and Standards Authority of India conducts tests at fish markets and harbors across the state to test the formalin uh, present in the fish or not. So this is uh, a result of the concern which is raised by the Kerala government over the chemical contamination of fishes which are sourced from Chennai. So first we want to know about what this formalin does. A formalin is a preservative which is also a cancer inducing chemical uh, used illegally to preserve the fish. First of all, this formalin is used to preserve the dead human bodies. So it is the same formalin is now used to preserve the fish also. So it is colorless, odorless. So it is very hard to detect the presence of the formalin in the human body or in the any uh, items. So it is usually used to prolong the shelf life of fish. In the long run, if you are continuously exposed to the usage of this formalin, it led to the damage of kidneys, liver and even can cause cancers. So only it is a carcinogenic agent. Apart from formalin, this sodium benzoate and ammonia can also be used as the preservative to preserve this fish. So this is an uh, impact like in some places in Kerala, they even banned the fish from Chennai and fish is being sent back on the fears that it could contain formalin. So if you see here in this uh, picture, they show like uh, the samples are already tested and the six samples have mild levels of formalin like 5 ppm and some five samples are contained like high levels of formalin of 20 ppm which indicates that it is not suitable for consumption. So the next article is the tree as an urban coordinate. For years we are talking about the conservation of forest. For example in way back in 1730 the Bisnoi community started to protest for the conservation of the forest like and also for example Chipko movement we all know that these are all for the preservation and conservation of the forest. Now uh, the ongoing protests are also happening for the same reason that is the conservation of the forest in Delhi and Mumbai to save their natural trees which is present in their urban spaces. So we all know that cities are the centers of construction so only the spaces in the uh, region are curated and created mainly by the human hand it is not natural which means if we want to do some development if we want to build some new uh, industries or anything we just turn our concentration first to the uh, cities only. So on that basis only they again plan to cut some amount of like 14,000 trees for the redevelopment of government colonies in South Delhi. So the people living in those regions consider tree as the geographical identification of their surroundings. Uh, whenever the uh, any plan to cut all those trees then the people started protesting against the cutting of the trees. And trees outside a forest in the sense the trees which are present outside the forest area which means the trees in uh, urban areas. So the forest are the first targets. If at all when government or any other industry want to implement some industrial development or anything their first targets are obviously the forest. Uh, for example in case of mining, construction of dams, highways, industrial projects etc. So they just made it done by means of putting this offset by compensatory afforestation. The UN's RED which is the reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation in developing countries. Its notion is like the planting and maintaining of forests as a mean to counter the climate change. So they proposed like if at all we want to counter this climate change we should plant the trees and we should maintain the forest as it is. 
So in India, the forests are governed under many laws. For example, Forest Conservation Act 1980, state laws, a lot of several state laws are also trying to preserve or conserve the forests. And the Indian Forest Act 1927, so which are all uh, focuses on the conservation and the diversion of these forests to share the habitat. Does this environment is only for human beings and not for other living things? Which means as we, India, move towards more urbanization, does it mean that we could cut all the trees in front of us without even even thinking about the conservation of all those trees. So it raises a question that whether it is a jungle of building or it is a shared environment between the humans and the biodiversity. So trees, not this quickly manicured or man manufactured green belts, creates a sense of civilization. So they, what they conclude is trees are creating this sense of civilization rather than this artificially created manufactured green belts. So the next topic is government taps RBI to trap all the transactions. So recently the central government asked this Reserve Bank of India to devise some IT based mechanism to keep a check on the online non cash financial transactions. So why the government is now trying to implement this is to prevent this black money on the money trail flowing in and out of thousands of shell companies. So the shell companies are the companies which are not at all having any active transactions and mainly used for the illegal transactions. So now the government is uh, planning to make the RBI as the sole repository of these kind of online transactions or cashless transactions. So the income tax department and the enforcement directorate if at all need these kind of online transactions informations then they have to request to this RBI to get the information for their access. So similarly uh, we have other acts like Prevention of Money Laundering Act in which the banks and the financial institutions require to alert the financial intelligence unit under the finance ministry to any suspicious transactions. If at all uh, this prevention uh, under this act prevention of money laundering and prevention act any banks or financial institutions are trying to uh, make some suspicious transactions uh, under this act they have to inform to the financial intelligence unit. So this financial intelligence unit is under the finance ministry. What are those suspicious transactions is the cash transactions of more than 10 lakhs need to be reported to the FIU which is the financial intelligence unit. So these transactions which is more than 10 lakhs are considered generally as a suspicious transactions. So following the 2016 demonetization exercise more than 86% of the currency in circulation in our country are considered invalid which means um, they are not under regular monitoring and all. So how they conclude is this move which is making RBI as the sole repository for storing the information regarding this online cashless financial transactions. It will help to track all these financial transactions in an efficient way and it is also help us to curb the black money and to identify the shell companies. Thank you.